rid of the rip balls, get rid of any kind of toy that is old, ripped, matted, has holes in it. If you cannot fix it for your pet, then get rid of it. Also, if they love that toy and they don't want you to get rid of it, try to replace it before getting rid of it so they don't freak out. With my cat, luckily he has not ripped his favorite stuffed animal. If you guys have been on my channel for a while, you know my cat is extremely obsessed with his frog, his stuffed frog. So I always check that frog to see if there's any holes because I don't want cotton everywhere. I just don't want pieces of like toys everywhere. And I feel like when it comes to pets in general, they will tear up their toys. So by the time you notice that that toy is broken, there's pieces everywhere. And it's just more of a mess, more of a hassle to clean up. So go through the pet toys or have like an actual bin or a little basket of your pet's toys in there and go through whatever ones that are broken, whatever ones need to be replaced. That way you're not picking up more of a mess in the new year. Skincare, hair care, food, vitamins, anything that has an expiration date that you consume or put on your body, please, please disregard them if they have expired. I know this is like kind of taboo to talk about because a lot of people don't believe, well, people that I have met don't believe in the expiration date. And yes, it, I mean, I get what people are saying. Like it could be a marketing scam. I totally get it. But when it comes to food, anything that I put in my body, I always, always check the dates. I am so cautious with that because I've had so many close calls. I remember having expired soup from a can. The minute I was done eating it, I threw up, had diarrhea for a couple days. It was horrible. So I do have a sensitive stomach and I have learned my lesson when it comes to consuming food products that are expired. And the same thing goes for when it comes to hair products, skincare products, anything that's expired or past that date on the bottle, like the little um, the little open jar. Obviously it's not gonna have a date, but it says 12 months after opening. So if it's expired, it's time for it to go because I have broken out in rashes before, especially when it comes to mascara and foundation. I've had my fair share of itchy eyes, um, breaking out in one spot due to the foundation being expired for like three years, using lipstick that was expired for like five years. I never wanted to let go of a lot of items when I was in my early 20s. And I always thought too that the expiration dates were just a little scam to get you to buy more products. But those dates are there for a reason because some products don't last forever. So whatever is expired in your house before the new year, it's best to go through everything, things that are in your fridge, things that are in your makeup bag, literally everything that you consume and put on your body, go through that stuff and check the dates. If you cannot remember when you open that product, then it's time to get rid of it too. Because there's sometimes I didn't remember, like when did I open this? And then I would use it and then I would break out. <laughs> so instead of like second guessing yourself and constantly thinking, when did you open it? I still think it's good, maybe it's not good. Get rid of it and purchase a new one if it's your favorite product. Also keep a log regarding like your makeup and your skincare. When did you open the product? Just put a date on when you opened it and then 12 months or whenever it expires, whether it's 12 or 24, put the future expiration date in that log. Anything that you're not using in the kitchen, like if you're not using your air fryer, donate it to someone that will use it. If you're not using certain parts of your blender, you've never used those parts, donate it to someone that will use it. If you have too much silverware, say you had a family of six and all your kids moved out and now it's just you and your husband, you don't really need a bunch of silverware items. You don't need a lot of cups. You know, you don't need your kitchen filled with utensils that you don't use. So this is another thing to go through before the new year, empty out your entire kitchen. I know it sounds very tedious. I'm not telling you to empty out the, you know, the, the food parts, but regarding the utensils and stuff, put everything on the table, put everything on the counters, put a box next to you and get rid of the things that you do not use or no longer use or things that you just aren't gonna use in the future put them in the box and donate them either to a shelter 
or donate them to someone that is going to get use out of it, whether it's in your family, your friends, people at work. I used to donate a lot of things when I used to work a regular job. I used to bring a big box and give away everything that I didn't use when I started my minimalist journey back in the day. So that was very, very helpful because the things that I got rid of, a lot of people at my old job needed those things. So do not throw some of these items out, especially if they're not broken. Do not waste items like that. Just because you don't use it doesn't mean that someone else is not gonna use it. They might really need that product and instead of them going out to the store to purchase it, you can just give them the product that you're not using. Any furniture in your house that you're not using or that you're hoarding in your basement, your garage, your attic, and you haven't used in years, donate those items. They are just taking up unnecessary space. Get out of that mindset of, I might need it. That whole having a backup table, having a backup nightstand, throw that idea out the window. There is no need to have backup or excess furniture. If you have downsized and you're keeping your old furniture from your bigger house, get rid of the furniture that you are not going to use or you do not have room for. You're gonna save yourself so much space. You can also make some extra money by selling them on Facebook Market. So if you have an extra nightstand or if you just wanna get rid of your nightstand and your coffee table, Take a picture of it, put it up on Facebook Market, or have a little yard sale. You can make some extra cash, or again, you can donate these items to someone that actually needs them in your family. Having extra furniture in the house is a huge space taker. Whether it's in your basement, your garage, or attic, even though you don't live in those areas and you don't visit the basement, attic, and garage often like you do with your bedroom and your living room, they're still taking up unnecessary space. So get rid of them and move on. Now that the new year is almost here, it's best to start fresh. So when it comes to your phone, delete old text messages, do a system restore if you want, um, save the numbers that you wanna save, delete numbers that you don't talk to anymore, um, delete photos that you don't need on your phone anymore, clear out your phone. That way, when the new year comes, you can start fresh. It's like you have a brand new phone. The minute I clear out my phone, with old text messages, photos, change up the background, delete apps that I'm not using, I feel like I have a new phone. Once when I'm done, kind of like decluttering the mess that's in the phone, also update the software, go through your emails, your junk mail. My junk mail is filled every day, it's just a nightmare. So I constantly go through my junk mail, I also go through my regular mail, delete anything that is spam, export all of my photos into my external hard drive. That way I'm not taking up unnecessary space on my phone and my phone runs nice and smooth. It's not laggy. You know, go through all your stuff in your phone and then also declutter the accessories like the phone cases, headphones that don't work, um, charging wires that don't work. Trust me, you will feel like you just purchased a brand new phone the minute you do a nice little cleanup with it. I am calling all millennials to finally let go of your CDs and DVDs. I know, it's hard. Trust me, I've been there. I had a huge collection of DVDs, all my favorite horror movies as a kid and as an adult, and then I had a huge collection of my CDs. It was like a giant binder of Every mixtape that I used to make off of LimeWire and Napster and BearShare, and then you have your regular CDs all wrapped in one giant binder. And now we do not need that, let's be honest. We have Spotify, we have Tidal, Titleist, Tidal, I think that's what it's called. We also have Pandora. Sorry for the lighting, by the way, you guys, I'm struggling over here trying to like fix the lighting. But yeah, we have Pandora, Spotify, all those, apps where you can just stream everything now. And if you don't wanna pay a subscription to stream your favorite songs, you can just play your favorite songs on YouTube. It's that simple. So it is time, my fellow millennials, to get rid of the CDs and DVDs. I don't even know if you should donate them at this point because I don't know who listens to CDs and or watches DVDs anymore. Even though I do still have a CD player in my car, I have a 2013 car, it is up there in age, but it still runs good and she's got low miles and I'm keeping her until the day she dies. Knock on wood, but I don't use a CD player. I do not own CDs, DVDs. Anyways, I just wanna tell you guys that it's time to get rid of your CDs and DVDs. There's no need to have all of these things around your car or around your house. 
especially with all the streaming apps that are out nowadays. There's literally no need to struggle with the scratches and putting the peanut butter on the, the CD. I used to do that to get rid of the scratches. It's crazy how far we've come, okay? It is crazy, but we now have an easier route when it comes to watching things and listening to music. There's no need to go through what we went through back in the day. Pens, crayons, pencils, school supplies that you're not using or not getting use out of, your kids are not that age anymore, or if you just simply don't use these items, donate them to a local school near you or donate them to a library. There's no need for you to have items in your house that you do not use. Again, I'm gonna say this over and over, it's like a broken record, but it's just gonna take up unnecessary space. Junk that is in your basement, broken machines, vacuums, anything that is in your basement that you do not use, get rid of it. Any exercise equipment that you do not use, get rid of it. Old TVs, old clothes, again, anything that you do not use, even if it's not old and you don't use it, get rid of it. Clear out your basement. Have next year be the year where you actually have an empty basement or a somewhat neat and relaxing basement. Try to get use out of that extra room because technically it is an extra room in your house. Every time my partner goes to houses or apartments that have a basement, he notices the amount of things that people just keep down there and hoard down there for those just in case moments or because the place doesn't have enough storage room, go through the things that you do not use or things that you do use. Bring them upstairs so you can get use out of them instead of them sitting downstairs. We always think to ourselves that that is an extra room. So instead of just treating it as a storage unit, why not just treat it as an extra room and I don't know, have it as a game room, has it, have it as like a movie room instead of a storage room where nobody goes down there. If you are holding on to a mismatched sock because you think it, it might show up one day and it's been years, it's gone. Just, just get rid of it. It's gone. You can use it as a rag. You can put it on your hand and use it to clean your dust boards, you know, reuse it for something else. But if it's been years and you're still waiting for that other pair to come home, back home, it's gone. It's never coming back home and just, you know, get rid of it. I used to hold on to my mis mismatched socks for years hoping that I could find that other pair. Knowing damn well, I will never find that other pair. So instead of wasting space in my closet or my little basket where I keep the socks, disregard any socks that don't have a match and move on. Broken items that you're not gonna fix, time to say goodbye. This again is a little bit self-explanatory. So the broken item situation, I think we all go through it. Holding on to phones that are broken because we might find someone or know someone that knows someone that could fix it and it never ever happens, you just end up having a box filled with broken items. Whatever is broken in your house, it is finally time to say goodbye. Either replace that item that's broken that cannot be fixed, or don't repurchase it and just let it go. Try not to keep broken items that you know you're not gonna fix. And if you are gonna fix them, then put a note on your calendar to go get that certain item fixed that way, it's not just sitting in your house or sitting in a box, basement or the attic or the garage, waiting for you to fix it. Anyways, you guys, I hope you enjoyed and I will catch you in the next video.